I believe God has called us as we turn together to Genesis chapter 15. I, 15, I believe God has called us together as a family. Say that word, family. family. Let's say it again, family. family. The unfortunate thing today is that word has been diluted in our society. It has been uh, twisted, perverted, polluted uh, to where it becomes things that family in its original inception never meant, was never meant to become. Um, and it has almost been devalued in our society. Um, and I want to talk to you today about family, not just physical family, but the family of God. We've been giving a blessing in our family. We've been given a blessing with our friends. Friends are an extension of family. And in the family of God as a church, we've been given the privilege to be called the family of God. We are people from all different kinds of places, different walks of life, different experiences from our past, different goals for our future, different circumstances in our present, but we have come together as the family of God. Some say the people of God, but the word family just gives a different connotation. I was told this past week by one of the professors, Dr. Slocum, I said, let me ask your opinion. I said, we believe that there are no strangers, just family. And I said, one of the things that I believe as a pastor is that no matter how large a church gets, that that church can still maintain a family atmosphere and connectivity. And he said to me, he said, you are absolutely right. He said, but most pastors don't foster it or believe in it. Therefore, if the church grows, it becomes an organization instead of a living organism called the family. We are the family of God. And as long as I have my breath, <laughs> I'm going to continue to stand for us being the family of God in partnership together. Genesis chapter 15, beginning in verse 5. Then the Lord took Abram. We know Abram was now called Abraham at a later time, so it's the same person. And he said to him, look up into the sky and count the stars if you can. That's how many descendants you will have. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord counted it unto him as righteousness because of his faith. Then the Lord told him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur, out of the Chaldeans, to give you this land as your possession. Father, would you add your blessing on your word and help us to understand today the honor and the privilege that we have to be a part of the family of God together here in this place. You have blended us together uniquely and powerfully and given to us a vision. May we stand and move and be about the vision you've given us while we embrace each other, enhance one another, equip each other, and empower each other to live and do the same. We bless you, Lord, and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord looks at Abram and he says, hey, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out and I want you to look up and I want you to count the stars if you can. How many of you have ever been outside on a starry night and looked up? Have you ever been in the mountains on a crisp, cold night and you look up and the stars are so beautiful? Have you ever tried to count them and figure out? I haven't. I've, I've not. It, it, for me, it would be not a good thing because I'd be frustrated that I wouldn't be able to do it. But he looks at it and he says, count them if you can. Of course, Abraham's answer is going to be, well, I can't count them. And the Lord says to him, he says, this is what I'm going to do. That's how many descendants I'm going to give you. Now, we think of descendant as one generation that follows another, and it is. But oftentimes, we lose the power of the context behind descendant. A descendant is a part of a family. God looks at Abram or Abraham and he says, here's what I'm going to do for you, Abram, because you were obedient to come out of Ur of the Chaldees and you listened to my voice and you allowed me to change you. I'm going to give you a family that you cannot number. Now that may not do anything for you and you're just like, okay, well, okay. When I came to know the Lord, the Lord pulled me out of Ur of the Chaldees. 
I was living and being and dwelling spiritually in a place that God never destined or wanted me to dwell. And he pulls me out of that. And what does he do? He brings me into the family of God that I cannot count the numbers of people I am connected with. I have been brought out but brought into a family. You have been brought out and brought into a family. You are not here by chance. I believe in caring and the dynamic of care. I believe that without care, everybody dies at some point. But with care and the approachability of ministry, people can live and be and become all that God has ordained for them to become. How many of you have ever met a snob? You meet a snob, one of the first things you want to do is lay hands on them with a tire iron. I mentioned that in class this week. I said, Dr. Slaughter said, what do you think of snob? I said, I want to lay hands on him. He goes, that's a good pastoral answer. I said, with a tire iron. He goes, oh. I don't like snobby people. I don't like being acting like we're stuck up. Listen, we cannot be a stuck up, stiff necked, stuffed up, stuffed shirted church God has called us to love each other and to be the family because we've all been pulled out of something. Who are we to stand up and say, look at me, look how great I am. No, 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 no. We were all in the miry clay, but God used people. Yes, it was the message of Christ Jesus, but it came through people extending a hand that pulled us out of the miry clay and we got our feet established in the kingdom. And then what did the Lord do? He said, I'm going to put you with the family. Now, I understand the dynamic in the earth today. I understand that over 60%, close to 70% of all first marriages ended divorce. I understand the, 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 the dynamic of blended families and things like that all in the earth today. But here's what I also understand. Sometimes in one situation or family blend, there comes chaos. And because of that chaos, God directs our steps and orders our steps to families of people that will be a system and cycle of health and healing for us because he cares for us. We are a blended family as a church from all different walks of life, but have a community of care here that I believe is like none other. I am not the king over the church. I'm not the Lord of the church. I'm a partner together with you in the ministry. And we are all hurting people striving to be made whole. And the moment that we forget that, we put on airs that make us look like kings and lords sitting on thrones demanding what we want and what you're going. No, this is a partnership in the kingdom of God. Yes, God puts one person over the helm and says direct and, and move and lead, but we are in partnership together nonetheless. I had somebody tell me one time, well, bless God, this is the army of God, bless God, and somebody's got to beat the drum and blah. You're the army of God. The connotation of being an army of God is simply coming from the armor of God that's outlined in the Scripture, not that we're a bunch of bulldog people walking around, scowling at other people, looking down our nose. That's not who we are. Why are you talking about this? Because we can't forget who we are and what God's called us to do. God's not called us to look down our nose at people and judge people. You do that, I will ask you to leave. I mean, please don't do that. I, I, that's how strongly I feel about it. I tell people in the community, that I, I've even been asked this, well, what if I don't wear a shirt and tie? So, dress modestly, that's all we ask. What does that mean? Don't wear your thong and tank top. you got to have some humor. You know, just be my, don't wear your thong and tank top. But, you know, if you want to wear flip-flops, it doesn't make it. We're a blended fan. We don't look at all that kind of stuff. But here's what I can promise you when you come in. We'll love you like nobody else will love you, and we'll be your family. We can never forget the dynamic because God has given to us the gift of family. In the kingdom, we are a gift. Listen, that's, this is why so many times people conflict with one another is because they fail to realize they've been given a gift as family. Well, 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 somebody didn't tell me. Somebody didn't do this. Somebody didn't smile at me. Somebody didn't. If I stood here long enough, that's going to annoy you. And here's, listen, listen to me. 
This is why conflicts happen. This is why we've got too many morons in pulpits. Because... Yes, I know this is going online. Yes, if you are a hireling, you're a moron, and you're destroying the people. Zoom in on my face, because I want them to see it. If, if, if you are doing that to God's people, you are exploiting God's people, and there's a special place in judgment reserved for those that exploit the people of God and harm them. I get angry. I get angry because we are called together to love each other and move in a direction that heals the land, but the church has become the laughing stop because most of the time the pastors and the churches take on a look of a monster instead of that that's supposed to be a blessing. And we forget that each other is a blessing in the family of God. I hope this individual doesn't mind that I call them out on this. But if they do, Angie Hoover will get over it, won't she? <laughs> She's sitting right there. Raise your hands. So now everybody knows who you are. You will never know the blessing that you post on Facebook. I, there's a lot of times people fo- post stupid stuff like I posted yesterday about people's breath on planes. But, 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 <laughs> but, but you posted something. I'll talk about that in a minute. But you posted something, and you talked about missing your family here at Healing Waters. You don't know what that did for me as a pastor. You really understand you have something in the mix when you are separated for a day or so and you think about that family. We are a family together. My professor told me something this week and I I got mad at him. He said, please don't laugh and don't call me this. I don't even know if I'm telling. I've done put myself out there. He said, the psychology behind what God has grown there at Healing Waters is this. He said, you are, I can't believe I'm telling you this. And I got mad. He goes, you are big daddy. And I was like, that's stupid. He said, don't, under, he said, don't misunderstand that. And he said, your heart is that of a father, and it doesn't matter the age. They said they could be twice as old as you, but your heart is to be the father to them. Yesterday when I got off the plane, I don't... I don't have it. I left it at home. Yesterday when I got off the plane, I posted it on Facebook, stand up, Cody. <laughs> Cody was with my family waiting for me uh, at the airport. Now, Cody came to us years ago. I actually met him in youth camp, and as a result, his family came here, and they're a blessing. But Cody is standing there, and he's standing there with a sign that says, White Chocolate Daddy. And he's standing there with that sign, and some folks are walking by going. And so when I walk up and gave him a hug, people just start laughing. But that's, that's my heart, and that's what our heart should be to care for each other. Listen to me. When you notice that somebody's not here, you shouldn't wait for a pastor or a team of people to try to get... We're a family and system of care. You should be in connectivity with people. Connectivity is everybody's responsibility. The moment we lose that, you don't have a family anymore. You have an employment system. They didn't punch the clock today. Find out. That's wrong. That's the wrong mindset. We have been given the honor of being a family. God tells him again in, verse, in chapter 22, and I'll hurry. He says to them, I will multiply your descendants. In other words, because of your faith, because of your heart, I'm going to give you more family. That's what I believe about this place. Because of who we are. That because of what God is doing, because of this and our faith in God, he's going to give us more family. But it's not going to happen just, but it's going to happen because you are connected to people and promote that cycle of care. God's initial call to Abraham was this get out of where you are, be saved from where you are, and go get connected with the family. There is no person that can exist outside of the family unit. I'm not talking about a codependency that's reckless, okay? We've seen that at times. 
I'm not talking about a codependency that says if he doesn't look at me or shake my hand, my earth is devastated and my life is shot and I'm going to go bury myself under the vehicle. I'm talking about a networking together of people that values each other's connectivity. You don't understand this. You may not understand it. But every Sunday I look around this room and one of the things, that, and we're going to be talking about the fall because we're going to look at going to an early morning service to be able to facilitate more growth because as you can see, there's maybe a handful of seats that are open. And we've got to continue to open our arms. Well, but you're going to grow too. I've heard that, that, that argument. You, you're going to have two congregations. You're going to have early. No, we're not. It's the, called the heart and the core of the people. If the heart and the core of the people are to love and care for each other, you can have 15 services on a Sunday. I'd be dead, tired, wore out afterwards. But you can have 15 services on a Sunday and still maintain the connectivity by what you do and who you are outside the scope of that one service. Listen, I, you don't understand. I'm passionate about you and our connectivity. But why family? Well, God knew that without a family, you'd be alone. Go back to the very beginning when God created Adam. God said, well, he's pretty cool. He's striking. He's strong. But there's a problem. He's by himself. I don't want Adam to be by himself. So what did God do? God created the first family. Do you understand this dynamic? God creates the first family. The first family sins. Because God loves the family, God covers the family with the first sin offering. And all throughout the scripture, God is working in the family. Listen, when God established Abraham's people and family, it was not just an establishment of a physical people called Israel. It was going to be a lineage that would be traced all the way to the Savior, Jesus Christ. It would go all the way to the one who hung between heaven and earth with his arms stretched out, nailed to a wooden tree, and his feet nailed, spilling his blood to the earth for the, man, the sin of mankind. Why? Because at that moment the veil was rent in two, and the Lord called out, Come into the family. You don't just have to be born in a physical location or according to a physical bloodline. You come in to the family. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. They will come into the family. But listen, when they come into the family, it's how you behave that determines the care and the growth cycle that those people get to be a part of. That's why Jesus was so strong when he said, hey, you know what, buddy? It'd be better for you if a millstone was tied around your neck and you were cast to the depths of the ocean than for you to offend one of these, my children, family. That's why we got some idiotic pastors in pulpits. I stepped down so you wouldn't say, he said idiot on the top step. No, I was on the second, third, second step, whatever. I told the professor I'm cut from a different mold because I've seen too many people cut by the mold that destroys. We are cut from a different mold because we've seen too many people that have been destroyed by other places. Let's face it, preachers, television programs, and caregivers that had a form of care but no power to care at all. Remember the warning to the church that in the last days perilous times would come. People be lovers, lovers of themselves. Paul's writing to Timothy. People be lovers of themselves, haughty, headstrong. You know what that is? Arrogant, high-minded. They're going to think a lot of themselves. Here's what they're going to be like. You don't like it, it's my way or the highway. You don't like it, get out, I'll replace you. Having a form of godliness. They're going to look stately. They're going to be able to articulate the speech but they'll have no, no power to form the family. Does, I, I want you to hear that. They'll look the part, they'll sound the part, but there'll be no power that forms the family in the cycle of care. That's where we're moving towards. 
I've never in my day seen so many churches planted and destroyed because people planting them did it with the wrong intention. We've got to be careful. Let me get off of that because, boy, I could park on it and I'd make myself mad. And probably 6464287. Matter of fact, whoever it was that hacked into my phone, I apologize to all of you. You probably all ele- look like all 1,100 contacts got sent some foolish message. Somebody hacked into my phone system while I was sitting at seminary. I do apologize for that. I've considered changing my phone number because of it, but too many people have my number. But if what I'm saying online makes you mad and you're a pastor, call me, 757-646-4287. I will help you understand yourself because you don't understand. (laughs) Jesus said, I am the great shepherd. If you study shepherds in in Scripture, they would get down there. They 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 would build relationships with their sheep. I had a pastor tell me one time, he goes, well, here's what you need to do. You need to set yourself here and the people here, and you need to be separate from them because you are higher than they are. And I said, well, boy, that, you're an idiot. How can you do that? And no matter where you are in the Lord, that attitude cannot be fostered in you as an individual either. You, the moment you look down your nose at someone, you forgot the institution of the church that came through Christ Jesus, which is the family of God. Why do you think there's such an assault on the family today? And the family of God? Because the enemy knows that he can manipulate men and women of God and destroy people. But this church, we as a body, must embrace the strength and the vitality that we have for not just each other, but for the hurting that are slowly finding their ways to our hallways. Someone said one time, are you a hospital or are you a ministry? I said, yes, we are. Because we're all hurting people striving to be healed. I'll be done in just a moment. I mentioned it earlier, you cannot grow people, places, and things at their own expense. You've got to love each other. You do. You've got to love each other. As a family of God, and in your physical family, you've got to love. You've got to make it work. Okay? You've got to work together. Now, that, yes, there are some times, as I told you earlier, that, that, that things happen and, and, and dysfunction. Listen, nobody should stay in an abusive situation and have their lives destroyed. You want to discuss the theology of that with me later? Fine, call me. I'll be on the road and have screaming teenagers on the back and probably won't be able to hear you, but you can call me anyway. John 13, 35, Jesus said, this is not my word, just the words of Jesus. Here's what he said. He says to his disciples, who are the disciples? Disciplined ones, are they not? Who's their leader? Jesus. Disciplined one connotates a child. We could stretch a little bit further and say that this was the initial contact and context of the family unit being built in the earth. And Jesus looks at his his disciples in John 13, 35, and he says, your love for each other will prove to the world that you are mine. Did you get that? Your love for each other will prove to the world that you are mine. How you treat people, how you love people. Now, sometimes in love, you have to be able to say hard things at times to help correct the road. I understand that. But you never, ever destroy the life of individuals that have been entrusted to you. You don't walk over them, you try to walk with them. I was told this week, and I'll close with this. professor looked at me he said I want you to understand something he said healing waters is one of the few exceptions to the rule that I know of in the United States and I was like what 
He said everybody's trying to build big business, get flashy, and they've lost the art of care. Here's my prayer. God, never let us lose. You know why I don't believe we will? Because that's where we started. I may not be the most educated, the most intelligent, the most well-spoken, or the best whatever. But I can promise you we'll love you. And I can promise you that as a church, we'll love our community and surrounding areas. And we'll open our arms to people and we'll say, there's a place you can go, but we'll embrace you. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter where you came from. We'll embrace you. But we'll take it a step further. We're not just going to embrace you. We're going to enhance you. We're going to help add value to you by giving good godly fellowship and people that surround you and when they look at you and they say I care or I missed you or I love you you know it's not just the blank look that the light bulbs on and nobody's home you know that they genuinely care we're going to give you things to equip you to be effective in the kingdom of God so that when a trial comes you're not easily destroyed and we're going to empower you to be able to do the same in and through encouragement to other people that is what a family of God is. It hit me this week sitting up there that the very vision that God gave to us many, many years ago before we even moved into this building and built this building, God gave us a vision not for a church, but for a family. Church, the iglesia, is the family of God. And that's how we should operate with each other. We should love and care like nobody else does. You have been given a gift within the confines of each other. Even if it's your first time here today. You may not understand it today, but should you choose to return, you'll understand that there's a family here that will love you. And lastly, family's a place that when you're hurting and you're scared, which we've all get there, you can come and cry on that family's shoulder. And they can pray for you, and maybe not even say anything, because the ministry of their presence speaks louder than the ministry of their words. That's one of the chaplaincy 101 they teach ministers. A lot of times you don't have to say a word, it's the fact that you're just simply that is who we are. That is who we will continue to be. We are the family of God located at Healing Waters. And I want to encourage you, value what God has given you in the gift of each other. Father, thank you for the gift of this family. Lord, I know that they all have physical families. And I know I didn't even touch on that this morning, God. But help them with the same tenacity and understanding apply the same principles to their physical family to count it a gift to love one another love their children their wives their husbands father I know that there are moments uh, through abusive situations God that separation comes and through other reasons God that not just in the church world but in the physical family world God, regardless of the dynamic, help us to embrace every single one of them and letting them know there's a God that loves them, there's a people that will uphold them, and there's a family unit called the church that in this place at least has not been forgotten. I thank you, Lord. I bless every person here and those that aren't here today. Help us in our partnership as we move forward that you would be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you so very much thank God for you. Don't forget, right up here today with Mark, if you're part of the gatekeepers, or if you'd like to be a part of that ministry, meet with them. See the folks to sign up for something for next week. Listen, invite some folks, and let's jam this place with people next week, and love people like God's called us to. God bless you.